Alright, this walkthrough guide is going to cover the planet progression in Solar 2. Planets, or small planets in the next stage from an asteroid. Um, once you've collected uh, about 19 mass. And I start off by getting asteroids to orbit you to collect more mass at this point. And you want to make sure you don't run into them because running into the asteroids um, will actually decrease your mass as opposed to before where it was increasing. And the concept here is you kind of want to fly next to the asteroids without being directly in front of their path, which can be tricky because you got to remember that now you have a significant gravity well as a planet, which means that um, as you start to move close to asteroids, they'll actually start to fall towards the planet. So the idea is you kind of want to circle them, anyway. match their speed, let them fall towards you, but at a rate where they're not going faster than you, in a sense. <clears throat> Although that it's really something that you um, We'll get the hang of with some practice after a while. And as you can see here, once we get to about 80 max, we get upgraded to a life planet, which is the second stage of the small planet, um, or planet uh, section of this game. And once you hit um, life planet, you'll start to see this evolution bar. Once that's uh, Full completely, which is basically just a time limit type of thing. You will start to spawn life on your planet in the form of turrets, ships, and shields. And the shields are useful because they'll prevent asteroids that collide with you from removing mass from your planet. Unless the shields are down, in that case, um, any hits that you take, whether it be from lasers or from asteroids or even. Um, or, well, actually, asteroids and lasers when your shields are down, yeah, will uh, reduce your mass. But running into other planets, even with your shields up, uh, can still significantly reduce your mass. Um, including running into stars is also another death trap. Um, you definitely want to avoid that because they will kill you fast. And next step is to start gaining experience by killing enemy ships. Because as your experience goes up, you'll start to produce more and better ships, along with getting additional turrets. As you can see now, at 7 kills, we have 3 turrets now. And I believe uh, the planet will also start launching the missile boats. Which it does, uh, it launches random ships each time. Um, although it typically will launch more of the smallest fighters, and then... Um, medium amount of the missile boats and then a small amount of the larger ships, the, the super ships you can see right there, which I guess are cruisers or destroyers or something. But, um, you just want to, you can basically farm a single planet. You just want to make sure that your shields stay up and uh, you don't end up getting destroyed by their ships. And if you start to lose too much shield and too many of your uh, your ships, you can move away. Another good idea here is also uh, you can make an asteroid shield by pulling asteroids into your orbit. Anything that comes into contact with them will get destroyed, which can keep uh, enemy ships um, at bay, or at the very least destroy some, or help destroy some that get close to you. And it can also soak up missiles. And as you can see, once you get to 18 kills, we now have four turrets and we can produce um, all ships at full rate. And at this point, um, to continue progressing, you're going to want to just soak up more mass until we reach the small star stage, which is the next up. Soaking up more asteroids. And the game seems to uh, spawn uh, tougher threats, I guess, as uh, you progress more and more. So you might notice that there's uh, significantly more um, planets with uh, life forms on them 
and turrets on than uh, there was when we were in Astro. As you can see, this particular planet, we ended up destroying the light on by reducing the shields and then stripping its mass. We can also um, end up killing light um, on a planet while it's still at the life planet stage, um, just by doing enough damage to it while the shields are down. Basically, it's kind of like a catastrophic event. Think like uh, how the dinosaurs died and stuff. It kind of gives you an idea of what happens in that sense. A good idea is always to um, save your planet or solar system or what have you. And, uh, once you've made a significant amount of progress, because um, some of the missions you want to be at different stages, like some of the missions you might want to have a full life and all your turrets, some of them you might want to be a small planet without any life because it can actually hold you back in some cases, which I'll explain further um, in the mission walkthroughs that you can find as video responses below this video, along with um, the progression for solar systems and uploaded that on our stars. If you um, run into any of the asteroids and they damage you, your uh, ships will start to destroy any of them that are not currently orbiting you, because they'll see them as threats. Also, um, when you see a planet starting to spawn life near you, you can go ahead and have your or get your little guys to shoot at it, or you can even run an asteroid into it to stop that from happening. And now we're a star.